Hey, it's Kara with eBike Escape. Today, we're reviewing the Nacto Ox. Let's do it. Before we get into the walk around, if you are looking to purchase a Nocto electric bike, please consider using the link in the description before you make your purchase as it helps us continue to make videos like this one. We'll also have links to our electric bike accessories list, our top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the latest deals in electric bikes. All right, with that, let's take a closer look at the Nocto Ox. And one of the reasons that we wanted to review a Nocto is because it is a popular brand on Amazon. They tend to be some of the most affordable models that are offered on Amazon. So we wanted to dive deeper in what you get for the price. So the Nocto Ox is priced at $10.99. And let's start up here in the front of the bike. All right, so up front here, you can see we have small fat tires. So these are 20 by four inch fat tires. They definitely have some knobs on here. So if you wanted to take this bike off road, but these fat tires, you can run them on lower pressure and it's going to give you some additional comfort while out on the road. We have 160 millimeter rotors up here in the front and we have Zoom mechanical disc brakes. They are adequate and Zoom is a brand that I've been seeing on more and more electric bikes that I have been reviewing. In the front here, we have a bolt-on axle as opposed to a quick release. If it were me, I would prefer to have a quick release in case you needed to change a flat on this bike, but of course that works just fine. Just wanna make sure you get those tight enough if you, of course, are purchasing this electric bike. You can see that the bike does come with front and rear fenders and really comes with a lot of accessories as we'll talk about. You can see here we also have the front light, but plastic fenders, they actually mount to the front fork. So that's really nice. They go on nice and easy and there's no rubbing. There's plenty of clearance. And then you do have this front light here. With most of the front lights on electric bikes, they do provide some visibility on the road, though you won't wanna use it for your only light if you're riding at night. All right, I'll go ahead and turn that front light on so you can get an idea of what it looks like in the day. It actually is a fairly bright light. We've been impressed by it. And of course it's going to be much more helpful at night. Moving on to the front suspension of this electric bike. So this is definitely a cheaper component on this bike. It has no lockout or anything. And if I push on the suspension, you can see that it's a little bit stiff. So I wouldn't plan on this suspension adding a whole lot of comfort, but of course you do have the fat tire. So this is something that they could perhaps improve upon. In fact, I think some people would be willing to pay a little bit more if they had a nicer front suspension. Since we're up here in the front, let's talk a little bit about this cable management. You can see that Nocto has these cables really nicely wrapped. You can see all the quick connections are right here exposed if you needed them. But I think this is actually pretty good for such an affordable electric bike. Sometimes you see quite a mess up here and you need to do some of your own cable management. And if you look here at the bottom of the frame, you can see that all of these cables run externally down this step through frame right here. So one thing you will see on other brands is these cables are integrated. So just something to keep in mind, but nothing wrong with external cables. Just doesn't look as clean as some electric bikes with those nicely integrated cables. All right, now let's move on to these handlebars. And this is what puts you in a very upright riding position. You'll see that in the third person riding footage about how upright we both are riding this electric bike. So I do like these handlebars and I think that's what makes this bike unique. In fact, that's kind of why we wanted to review this electric bike as well, because it is an accessible frame and it does have a folding mechanism, which we'll show here in just a second. 
All right, now let's go into the cockpit here. All right, so we'll start over here with this display. Very simple display. There's a power button over here on the left side. Go ahead and turn that on. And you can see you have the assist level at the bottom, one, two, three, four, or five. You have the power, which is the battery capacity. And then above that, you actually have how much power you're using, which is just a bar as opposed to showing you the wattage. And you do have miles per hour there in the top right-hand corner. And then the bottom right-hand side, we have odometer, your trip odometer, your voltage it looks like, and current. And then it looks like a trip time as well. And then the CUR button over here on the right, that turns your headlight on and off. And holding the pedal assist down button actually enables walk mode if you'd wanna use that. And one of the cool things about this electric bike is that horn that is integrated into the battery. Definitely going to get some attention out on the trails. And as far as grips go, this is a pleasant surprise. These are actually locking grips, which feel pretty good. So they don't slide when you're using the electric bike. One of the unique things, and I haven't seen this a whole lot in the electric bike space, is a right-hand thumb throttle. And the reason companies typically don't put thumb throttles on the right is because of course you have the shifter. You can see we have a Shimano thumb shifter over here on the right side. And I can still reach it, but of course this does add a little bit of distance having that right hand thumb throttle. And then you do have unbranded brake levers, but they do have motor cutoffs. So as soon as you hit those brake levers, it's going to kill power to the motor. And this here in the center, this is our cell phone mount. This is actually one made by Night Eyes. And if you are looking to purchase this, you can check out our electric bike accessories list, but this does not come with the Nocto Ox. I think it's worth calling out this seat because those that have tried this electric bike have appreciated this a little bit bigger, but nice and plush seat. Definitely one of the nicer seats that we have tested out on electric bikes. Because this bike has the battery located behind the seat. There's actually a little lever here, which is really nice to have. Lifts that seat up so you can remove that 10 amp hour battery. You can simply unlock it and it does have a nice handle on it and you can remove it for charging. Otherwise you can charge it right on the bike up to you. And in order to put the battery back, simply slide it back into place. And then you do need to turn the key two clicks in order for the bike to turn on. So this bike actually does have a locking position. So if I have the key in the middle position, I can't remove the battery and I can't turn on the bike. So that's of course going to be nice for theft prevention. Though I always recommend taking your battery with you if at all possible, especially if you live in an area where bike theft is common. If you are wondering how this bike folds up, first you need to fold these pedals. So these are plastic pedals, nothing fancy, but they do fold up pretty easily. Simply push in and rotate them and do it on the other side as well. To fold this electric bike, there is a quick release right here. You simply undo that. And then it does also have a locking pin. So you actually need to lift this up in order for the bike to come unfolded. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky. I can always use two people. And there is a stand at the bottom of this electric bike to help it rest on a hard surface. Obviously you want the kickstand up as well. And so this is a look at how the Nocto Ox can fold. One thing to note with these handlebars, if you do unscrew these four bolts, you could simply remove the handlebars altogether or perhaps fold them forward, again, because you have a little bit of slack here with the cables. Moving on to the rear of the bike, we have six speed freewheel and we have a Shimano Turney derailleur, a very common component in some of these affordable electric bikes. I find that it gets the job done and for most people, it's going to be perfectly adequate. Again, nice that they're using a name brand there as opposed to using an off brand. And then of course you have that motor, 500 watt motor. And we'll show you here in a little bit just how powerful this motor is. And you can see here on the wheels, we actually have the cutouts, which not only look cool, but they also reduce the weight a little bit. And 
We talked about what this bike comes with. You can see the rear fender, and it does come with this rear rack, which is a little bit surprising for such an affordable electric bike. You can put some panniers on here if you would like. It also looks pretty nice, I think. And as with most electric bikes these days, they do have the kickstand located towards the rear, so it's not going to come in contact with those pedals. Really like that, and this is a beefy kickstand, so no issues here in the grass. The bike feels really solid, doesn't feel like it's going to tip over. And of course, here in the rear, you have those zoom mechanical disc brakes as well. And you can see the mounting points here for that fender, as well as the rear rack. All right, that completes the walk around. Now let's get to our first person riding footage, our throttle test, as well as the various pedal assist levels. And then we'll take this up the large hill. All right, we are going to go through throttle only and some of the pedal assist levels. Now, one thing to note with this electric bike, which is different. So not only do you have a right hand thumb throttle, the throttle power is also controlled by the pedal assist level. So I have it in pedal assist five, so we'll be getting full power from this throttle and we'll see how fast it goes. And then we will show you the other pedal assist levels with throttle and then do some pedal assist riding without the throttle. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only. And got the GPS speed, 12 miles per hour, 14. 16 and it is pretty windy windy there's 21 22 23 so it looks like 22 23 miles per hour top speed on this electric bike let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four that takes us down to about 15 pedal assist three going about 14, 13, pedal assist two, down to 12, and pedal assist one, throttle only, down to about 10 miles an hour. All right, so now let's talk about the various pedal assist levels. So this is a 500 watt motor, and I'm in fourth gear here, pedal assist one, Providing a little bit of effort, we usually ride our electric bikes in the highest gear to get a little bit more of a workout. Let's go into pedal assist two here. Now we're going 12, 13 or so. We are going about 10 before, I believe. Let's go into pedal assist three. And this is where I really feel like I need to shift up. Let's go in the fifth gear. Going about 14 miles per hour. And let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four. Actually pretty good on the power delivery in between each of the modes. Going about 16 now. Let's go into pedal assist five. Definitely feel the motor kick in a little bit there. My legs are spinning, so I'm gonna shift up to six gear. And there's that max speed, 23, 24 miles per hour. And I wouldn't want to pedal like that for a long period of time. So again, pedal assist five is going to probably be reserved if you're going up a hill. It's not the most comfortable pedal assist level to pedal in in the highest gear. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what you can expect from the throttle as well as the various pedal assist levels in the different gears. And I do get this question a lot, can I pedal this bike with a dead battery? And usually the answer is yes, but you're not going to be going very fast. You can see pedal assist is completely turned off. I'm in first gear, and I would say I'm working a little bit. I'm going about six or seven miles per hour, and a hill would kind of be a nightmare uh, to go up. So something to keep in mind with any electric bike is that you probably don't want to run out of battery if you can avoid it, and hopefully you don't have issues while on the road. 
And by the way, this is the speedometer app by Cool Nix. I get that question quite frequently. I obviously like it because it shows the speed nice and large there. All right, with that, let's get to the hill climb test, the hill that I take up all the electric bikes that I review. Here we are at the hill climb test, and I should note that my guess is we're right around 50, 60% battery, so this isn't a full charge. But this hill is going to look much smaller on your screen than it actually is, so I will put on the specs on the screen of this hill so you can get an idea. And as I mentioned, this is the hill that we test up all of our electric bikes. So if you check out any of the other reviews we've done, you can kind of compare the power. And again, this is a 500 watt motor. The first test we'll do is full throttle and see what it does. Here we go. And again, very windy today. Getting up to speed here. There's that 23 miles an hour, which is pretty darn impressive for an affordable electric bike. And actually the battery is reading two out of five bars. I think that's because it's obviously drawing on the battery. So it's reading the voltage. And now the hill's really starting here. Still going 17, 16. The power bar on the top left hand screen, top left hand corner of your, the screen display here shows that I'm using full power, obviously, not surprising. It would be nice if it did show the wattage because I'd be very curious what this bike is peaking at. But we're going 16 up this hill. The display is showing 15, but the GPS is showing 16. I mean, that is extremely impressive in my opinion for an affordable electric bike. And we're almost at the top. So, wow. I thought it was going to do good, but I didn't think it was going to do that good. So I have to say that this bike is going to be capable if you live in a hilly area. And again, the battery wasn't even full. And now we're at the top. All right, so now I'm going to head back down the hill and we'll test the bike out with some pedaling. Here we are at the bottom of the hill again. I'm going to actually start pedaling and shift down turn the pedal assist down a little bit. All right, second gear, starting the hill. And I would say I'm working a little bit here. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. Still getting a bit of a workout. Go ahead and go in pedal assist three. Still going 10, 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four. And this is probably the point where I want to shift up. Legs are spinning a bit. There we go, third gear. Could even go in the fourth, I think. Not pedaling too terribly hard. And again, we're conserving a lot more battery than we just were doing the throttle only. Let's go ahead and go to pedal assist five. And yeah, I think I would wanna shift up here. Some moderate pedaling. Could even go six, I think. So yeah, I mean, if you're looking at an electric bike, it's always good to pedal up the hills, save your battery a little bit, get a little bit of exercise. Though it's good to know if you 
don't want to do anything, you can always rely on that throttle if you'd like. All right, next, let's get to some third person riding footage and we'll give you our concluding thoughts on the Nocto Ox. The Nocto Ox fits solidly into the affordable category. In fact, the Nocto Ox at 1099 isn't even the company's most affordable model. You'll find e-bikes all the way into the $600 price range on Amazon. Now the Ox is a bit of a different beast. When the company reached out for review, we intentionally asked for one of the more expensive models to see how it stacks up. And for the most part, we were pleasantly surprised. Let's start with the highlights. The Nocto Ox is accessible with its step-through frame and it even folds. The ride feel with the fat tires lends itself to a more moped style experience, but with the improved ergonomics of being able to raise the seat for leg extension and sit more upright with the handlebars. Nocto lists the height range from 5 feet to 6 feet, which seems about right, but this bike is going to feel most comfortable for shorter riders with its shorter wheelbase and lower than most minimum seat height. I am 6 feet tall and was still able to ride this bike even if I was a bit more crunched up. Kara is 5'5 and could much more easily get full leg extension. In fact, this bike went to Kara and she has already reported back on some of her favorite features. An easy to remove battery, the added comfort of the fat tires, and the ability to put it in the back of her vehicle, though keep in mind this electric bike is heavy at 70 pounds with its steel frame. I was happy to see the Shimano shifter and derailleur which isn't necessarily a given on budget e-bikes. And one of the things that surprised us the most was the power of this 500 watt 50 newton meter torque motor as you saw in the riding footage up that large hill. This bike might be better suited to an experienced e-bike rider or at least someone who is confident in their riding skills because this bike still pulls a bit even in the lowest level of pedal assist. Nocto lists the range of the 10 amp hour battery at 15 to 20 miles, though we expect you could get more than that with some pedaling based on this battery size compared to other electric bikes that we have reviewed. Many will appreciate the handlebars which put you in an upright riding position. I actually prefer these types of handlebars compared to some of the straight handlebars found on many folding electric bikes today. I'd imagine most people would agree. There are a couple of areas where I think this bike could improve. For one, I think an actual short stem as opposed to the bolted cap style to lock the handlebars down might lead to a bit more rigid feeling in these handlebars. The front suspension also leaves a bit to be desired though this downside is somewhat offset by the fact that fat tire electric bikes offer additional comfort, especially at lower tire pressure. Plus the seat in our opinion is plenty comfortable as far as stock seats go. We think a few improvements on this bike could even allow it to fetch a higher price. For $10.99, you're getting a powerful bike that comes with fenders, a rear rack, integrated horn, and a front light. The Nocto Ox ticks a lot of boxes and competes well when you look at other electric bikes in this price range. I don't have much experience with Nocto outside of this review, but they do seem to be one of the more popular brands on Amazon. As always, do some research to see how this company takes care of their customers should any problems arise. I hope you found this video helpful. Links in the description to help support the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.